my college, my high school strength coach was like, yo, we have our old squat racks. I'll sell them to you for a hundred bucks deal. And when I got them, man, that was a bad deal. You got a whole, uh, well, a whole yeah, dumbbell, dumbbell rack, rack for yeah. 90. You got a f- couple squat racks. Man, yeah. You got ripped off there. But I, th- I think that yeah, that's true. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Garage Strength Podcast, where Earl is still the three-time co-author world champion of the year. He's still going for a fourth right now. Season started. Hey, I actually talked about that in my YouTube live on Tuesday, and people were like, yo, that sounds good, because I was trying to lay out like all the different things that are in that outline that were your... Oh, yeah. You're blasting through. Now I feel more pressure on my shoulders to repeat as champion. <laughs> I think that, I think what's fun is that each time we're just going to keep getting better and better and better. Oh, yeah. So it's smooth. And did I ever tell you this? So, like, um, I do, I have creative exercises for myself. I start, like, I've been doing this for years. Like, I've been doing it before I met you. I wanted to be more creative. So I knew I had to be creative more often. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to do it actually to be better at music. So I started drawing to be creative and I would write to be creative. And one of the things, I, I forget which book it was I read. I think it was The War on Art. And it said like the pro does it every day. Mm-hmm. And where the pro like beats the amateur is like they do what they can do. They don't like try to do it all at once. So I was yeah. like, I'm at the point now where I know exactly what I can handle in my day. So, like, I know I can sit and draw in color for about 20 minutes a day. I can sit and write 200 words a day. I can sit and play my, like, instruments for, like, 15 to 30 minutes a day. Like, I, and I have these times carved out. I know when I'm going to do them in my day and how I'm going to execute. But I do every single one of them as an exercise and keeping my creative muscles. Damn, that's pretty good. Going. That's impressive. Um. And I did it all because I wanted to get better at making music. And what's crazy is the one I do the least now is the music. Like, it's the one I'm probably the least invested in anymore. But it, it's it been the catalyst for the yeah. other areas. And it, it's interesting because it's like, dude, I hear that. You know, we won. I, that's a, dude, that's a great lesson for everybody. But it's also like what you said when you described it, you were like, I carve out time no matter what, no questions asked, yeah. I'm doing it. And to me, that that statement alone is like, this is a priority for where I want to go with this skill, and it's going to get done. Yeah, and to the point then, like, I use that, like, that's why I'm able to help, like, write. Yeah. Like, I... I've been a lifelong reader, but like as a kid, like I'm, I was like any other kid. Like I don't want to yeah, write. I never like, wanted to write. I and, never wanted to write. And now, like as an adult, like Julie will joke with me. She's like, "Oh yeah, you have to do like a ten page paper." She's like, "What's that going to take you? Like thirty minutes?" No, it's not. Yeah. But like, it could. You, you tell me. <laughs> you tell me ten pages, and like I don't bat an eye. Yeah, I'm like, okay. "All right, that's t- that's this that." What's the boom. subject on? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's let me just the, start going. Yeah, I have. I don't know if I haven't shared these with anyone. I was talking about them today. I have like four or five documents between 40 and 80,000 words. Of just my ideas on like a topic. I would like decide on a topic. I'm going to be like, all right, I'm going to write about this. Go. Yeah. And I, I think it's like, I think that that thought process is something that, and, and I, what's interesting for me is when, when Trevor asked me about the app, He'll he'll give me then this is as close as I can really relate it is like he'll give me basically an outline and he's like, All right, I want you to think through all of the nuance of everything that triggers you to make these decisions. And the more I've been doing that for Trevor and for Peak Strength for the app, then the more I start to see it and think and I'm aware of how my brain is working. And the weird part is like Now, even with the company, I'm going like, okay, there's like five or six types of problems. You're transferring the skills. Yeah. And I'm taking the skills that I've learned by accident from the app, from like thinking through my coaching. So it's it's basically taking coaching thought process that I wasn't truly entirely aware of 
that you, it was more intuitive. It was it like was very, part of who you were, like yeah. what you did, and you had to like step out and sort of like look at exactly a bug at yourself, like that. yeah, and like say, all right, why am I making this? Analyze yourself, evaluate yourself, and then step back and be like, right, made me understand me more. But now I can also help more people. People, yeah. And then it, and now I'm like, why not just do the same thing for the company? Yeah. Like, there's stuff in the business that we're trying to figure out right now that I'm like super overwhelmed with. And then I go, well, wait a second. If I just approach the, the scenario X, Y, Z, it's this type of problem. In the past, I've dealt with this problem successfully doing this, have the same framework. But going to what you're, you're saying, it's like if you're just practicing that and you're thinking about it and you're developing that skill, it doesn't matter. It's, it could be drawing or it could be – gardening yeah and you're gonna figure it out creating reflexive movements <laughs> yeah exactly. you know what i mean like exactly. things like that yeah because i always that's one thing i was like when we will talk and exercises come up and it's like well how could you mimic that like my brain doesn't work like your brain creative like how quick you are with that creative but like that's where your creative brain like Lives. operates yeah, yeah yeah that's true and, and i it, think about I, yeah i mean yeah it's weird that you're bringing this up because I, I was talking with Trevor and I'm like, you know, sometimes I wonder personally, I'm like, how much do I want to? So I gave the the test and I, and you gave me the response too with the two and the five year goals. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to try and tie this back around, but well, this is important to run in a business, having goals and things to achieve yeah. and how to get there. Yeah. So the two, five year goal. Yeah. How do you see yourself fitting into this goal long term? Do you see yourself fitting in? You know, and everybody gave me a response. And then I'm laying everything out. And Trevor, Trevor was like, I want to see your two and five year goal. And Caitlin wants to see it. And I was like, well, I, I really genuinely need to think through the company's vision and everybody's two and five year goal. And I want to piece everything together. And then I am struggling currently with, I said this to them both where I was like, I don't know how much I should be coaching. I love coaching, but at the same time, I like doing the business stuff, but at the it's a new challenge. Yeah. It's like a new challenge. And then, and then, and, I, and then I also like, there's some parts of coaching that I hate, but there's a lot of things that I do that I despise that I still am doing. And I, and I said to Caitlin, this stuff that I do in the company that I shouldn't be doing, I think leaks into me when I'm coaching and I'm not fully present when I'm coaching sometimes. So then that has a negative impact. So you on want it. that stuff like removed from your work life so that well, I can, that part of your work life, like more yeah, the business yeah, stuff. Yeah. So it doesn't bleed in and to negatively coaching or to like really working on yeah. the company. And then I could analyze like, all right, which do I really want to do more of coaching or running the company or both? And then, you know, whatever, but it goes back to, damn it. I forget how I was going to tie this back to what two you were, five year goals. Yeah. So carving it, out time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it, yeah. And it goes back to like analyzing those goals and saying like, all right, where do I want to be myself in two years? More of the coach, the CEO coach, you know, like, I, I don't know. It's just like one of those, and it, to me, that's part of that's also a skill too. Is is being reflective and saying like, are you doing everything that you need to do to make yourself happy? And it's typically going to be, if you get better at a skill, you're going to be happy. And it reminds me of drawing and playing music and stuff like that because that's really where a lot of people find their most happiness. Yeah. Well, the brain on like the arts does yeah. very well. Yeah. It, it's very healthy for it. Like, and to me, the arts could be engineering. Could be. Oh math, yeah. Could There's be, tons of ways to be creative. Like. Um, comedy, yeah, super creative, right? Like yeah. just laughing. Yeah, um, your ability to tell a story to people, like yeah. sitting around, yeah. like entertaining friends, like that's a skill in and of itself that takes a creative aspect to it. One hundred percent. Um, yep. I don't know. I I don't run a business, but I can assume you can be pretty creative in how you run it too. And I know with my role within this business, I get to be super creative a lot of times. Right. Like. I know a lot of people in this business get to be super creative because even though it's like it's a fitness gym, health, nutrition, like all that stuff, like, hey, cultivate your power, become elite, you know, you're a freak, you can achieve your goals, like all that stuff transfers out, flows into life yeah. and you can work through that and like create a program, 
things of that nature. But there's also the whole like media side of it too. Yeah. And like <laughs> what's funny is the what's interesting is that two and the five year goal. I've never been like a super like team rah rah team guy. Yeah, you threw shot. <laughs> like <laughs> like it was literally you in the circle. Yeah, like, yeah. But I never felt more like a team after doing that drill with everybody and reading everybody's response and being like, all right, now I know who's on the team and who's not. And uh, being like, <laughs> but also being like, yo, this is the team. Like, this is the squad. And we're going to, and th these people want to be a part of the journey and we're going to ride. Yeah. And like, I felt like this shit's, that's the part with the coaching or with the, the, the business side that I was like, this is, this is a, a skill I've never worked on. I've never, I've never spent the, you've spent more time developing your drawing than I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I, I could tell you stories cause I'm like all self-taught. Like yeah. I, I just was having fun one night and like, I could see lines in certain ways and I'm like, Whoa, I'm like, all it is is that yeah and then just kept doing it and like i'm still not I sh i'm not good I, you're pretty freaking good though yeah but I, like i couldn't go get paid doing it and maybe that's a problem too could, maybe a little bit maybe that's a problem like i always think like good is like it's economically viable for yeah, you no, I don't, versus I, like you know i think you could get paid you can't just have hobbies I'm look, anymore i'm looking at your shirt and i think you could make that or better um somebody got paid to do that maybe not off the dome but from a reference i could recreate it yeah um, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's fun. But it's also fun because, dude, even today with the, I don't even remember what our podcast. We're talking about. about the business, dude. Oh, That's shit. why we're so focused on goals and stuff. Okay, like so, so, so growing it, like because everyone, like the origin story, right? Starts yeah. in your parents' garage. Yep. What fifteen years ago at this point, dude? Two thousand eight. It'll be ex yeah. It'll be exactly fifteen years. Yeah. Like literally today, like right now, I came home from Canada and it was this time fifteen years ago. I was like, I'm gonna do. You I'm start, start a business training people in the garage. You're hustling equipment off Craigslist. Yep. Facebook Marketplace isn't a thing yet. Yeah, it didn't exist. Craigslist was still less creepy. Yeah. Much more. You're going normal. meeting people and like and eBay too handshake drug type scenarios 100 percent. but yeah. it's like hey walmart parking lot all right yeah. cool yeah you pick this up you get lug it back dumbbells all rusted out or something but i got dumbbells and this goes back to we at penn state my senior year they they built a new weight room and and it was the like the rec center and one of the strength coaches loved me because i would ask him all these questions and just sort of pester him about training and so he said to me, he goes, hey, you know, they're they're moving all the old dumbbells out of wreck and they're taking them up to salvage. So at Penn State, there's this thing called salvage and they do a salvage auction every year. And it's crazy. If you want to see, you will never see more Amish people in one location <laughs> that is in a non Amish location than when you go to the salvage auction at Penn State University. You will literally see a thousand Amish people standing in line bidding on stuff that all the stuff that the university is getting, just getting, getting rid, rid of. of yeah because some of it's legit but they said to me hey they took all this stuff up there dumbbells go up to salvage before they go to auction tell the guy i sent you so i go up there and the the guy they have all the dumbbells it was five all the way up to one tens and it was in two and a half pound increments whoa and the guy's like I walk in, I was like, yo, one of our strength coaches said that you guys had it. I have a place I can store it. You know, could I buy the dumbbell rack? He's like, how much, how much do you want it for? And I'm like doing the math. Like at the time it was probably like 25 cents a pound. Um, wow. And I was like, dude, I have no money. I was literally like, I have no money. You know, I have my swipe card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and hey, puppy. <laughs> he goes, he's like, well, how much do you want to pay for it? Like, like got mad at me because I was standing there. And, dude, there's, like, fax machines, copy machines that they're getting yeah. rid of. I was like, dude, I got 100 bucks on me. And he's like, all right, I'll sell it to you for 90 And, <laughs> dude, bought a full set. And it's the same set yeah. we're still using <laughs> for crazy. $90 in 2007. And I think that that was the biggest factor. Like, and I, I didn't have a car at the time. My buddy, my, uh, my college roommate, had a old Prius. Well, at the time, it was like a newer Prius that his dad was like, just drive this while you're up there. And I, I probably took like 15 to 20 trips in this Prius, just beating the shit out of it, 
to our apartment, hiding it in the basement, not hiding it, but storing it in the basement. And then my dad brought up a truck and we took it back to my house. It sat in the house for about a year and a half until we opened up the gym. And I think to me, it's like, I was always good at in that early dude, probably the first seven to eight years. That's all I was doing was like figuring out what I could do from a business standpoint. That's probably the hardest thing, right? Yeah. Starting off. Yeah. Like, how am I going to make my rent? Yep. Or how am I going to find someplace super cheap? Or basically, you were almost rent free, I'm going to assume. To yeah, I was very, very fortunate that, like, I had I had my parents. And, and, you know, my so my dad was a phys ed teacher and a wrestling coach. And so he was, like, big into their strength lifting, their strength program for wrestling and for football. It was high school. And. Uh, you know, his high school, I want to say back in like 98, 99, built a weight room. But they had this closet weight room before that. And so my dad asked the AD and... This is a single leg squat rack, Yeah, right? and he goes, <laughs> he goes, hey, you know, what about some of this equipment? We had an incline bench, a single leg squat rack. And he's like, dude, it's going to sit in the trailer. No one's going to touch it. Whatever you guys want to take. And it was like, we got, we got like two curl bars, two two bars the bar that i actually snatched 300 pounds on the first time i ever snatched 300 was one of those bars it didn't turn at all oh, geez. uh the the squat rack that we're still using no wonder you here. run across the yeah the exactly garage with exactly it. at the the there's actually two frames of platforms that were from that closet gym that we still have platforms on in the gym today and then my high school when i graduated built an addition to their gym my college, my high school strength coach was like, yo, we have our old squat racks. I'll sell them to you for a hundred bucks deal. And when I got them, man, that was a bad deal. You got a whole, uh, a whole yeah, dumbbell, dumbbell rack, rack for yeah. 90. You got a couple squat racks. Man, yeah. You got ripped off there. But I, th I think the, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think the biggest factor for me was one, my parents were, you know, so we had that in my, in my, my parents' garage. Literally yeah. that's where garage strength comes from. And my parents bought me bumper plates my sophomore year we still have downstairs these big fat Krabergs. and my my dad was like what do you want for christmas blah 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 and i said to my mom i was like mom all i want is a pair of bumper plates i want to be able to clean out in the the garage i want to be able to clean out there so they bought me a pair of 25s we still use them and that was all i got for christmas that year and we would put metal plates on the outside 35s and we would just load up dude if you did so you do 295 you'd have the the big fat bumper and you have two thirty fives on the side and we're doing power cleans, dropping it. And my dad still bitches cause the floors cut from where <laughs> the metal would bounce and hit the, hit the concrete. But I think the biggest factor was because we already had that. My dad sort of fostered that in me early. The cult, the, the environment was in the, the garage at my parents' house so that when I started the business, uh, and they didn't make me pay rent. That's where I'm extraordinarily privileged because they they let me they let me basically are like, all right, stay here for a year and a half to two years, and if it, if it works, then then you look at this as your loan. This is us giving you a loan. Yeah, we we don't have money, but we can but we give can you give you spot. space. We yeah. can like and see what you can build. And it was 800 square feet, and that that's what grew into this. Yeah. So I, you take that right. You hustle equipment. You look for deals. You you, you I don't want to say scrounge, but and you're thrifty too about it. Yeah. And then you start getting clients coming in one, two, three, tell a buddy, bring your friend. Um, I think you were pretty bad. I hear too at the beginning asking for money. I would say all the way up until we moved here. Yeah. Um, so until 27. So then from there you go to the barn barn, you come to here, Yep. here things get pretty stable with like developing until, athletes on site. Yeah. Not until COVID. And then COVID comes and yeah. it's like, Oh my God what do we do? Cause yeah. like we were making ends meet and it's like, all right, got to come up with a plan. So there's this little pivot, right. Yeah. That comes about where it's like, well, we can reach more people, but we have to get good at this other thing too. Yeah. And yeah. that's where all the media stuff start. Like I shouldn't say all the media stuff starts. It's where it's like how the seeds were already planted. Like you already had a pretty legit Instagram, right? Decent. Yeah. Decent. Well, to your standards now but at the time like you were pumped with what you had i bet yeah yeah and it was it I, was now working those and then you just get this big explosion yeah and i i think it's that quote like you know you work you work 
10 years or 12 years to become an overnight sensation. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, not that we're even a sensation yet, but it's like one of the, one of the factors, actually, I think I might have this. He's reaching for some, oh, he is, it's like a little so monopoly looking our, thing. This is our original. Oh, how you paid. This is how people paid all the way up till 2015. So anyone listening, like just in the ears, it's like a metal monopoly like case with the go and like boardwalk and is it park? Yeah. App? Yeah. And then like two dice on it and then it like goes into So people would walk in and they would they would they would pay cash into Mediterranean Ave. And 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 checks and I would dude I wouldn't even count it. I wouldn't even dude I would I would literally just, just separate the checks and the cash and I put it in the bank account. Uh I lived at home till I was 27. 20 yeah, like till I was 27 and my sister uh when my sister wanted to move back, that's when we bought the barn. So she and I split the down payment because I had a lot of money that I saved up. I just kept saving and saving and saving. And I think that the one thing I, that I will say is that when we moved here, so we had to switch obviously from uh, a the, monopoly bin to a, yeah. a actual planner. Like a, we got Zen planner or no, we had a, a mind, uh, mind, mind body. body. Yeah. We had mind body when we first got here. That's but, how I signed up for my yoga classes. You yeah. still have to go do yoga with me too. Yeah, I'm, I do. I'm, until you do this, I am going to hound you because I am convinced you're going to die. And when you come out, you're going to be like, when can I do it again? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I both, know it. Both of those. Yeah. Um, I would say the thing that was, I would say there was a couple of things, though, that I did want to bring up was that like up till 2020, we were struggling financially to maintain and to keep our heads afloat here mm -hmm. so we moved here in 17 and then until 20 you know till 20 so dj left because dj asked for a pay raise and we we couldn't give it to him and like caitlin and i were like dude we, we can't do it like we literally cannot pay him this money like we and it wasn't like he doesn't deserve the money it wasn't like anything else it was literally if we paid him we would we would go bankrupt like and we were at this point where caitlin was like I can go back and start teaching. And I was like, no, you can't do that. Like you're working at home and you're helping with the business. But at the time there was only like three employees. And, um, what, what happened then when DJ left, I was like, that was the first time I was like, I'm a failed fucking business person. Like this sucks. This sucks. I, I've let him down and I'm letting the, the gym down. Cause we lost an important employee. Now there was some other stuff going on. And I think that it, ultimately it was probably the best thing for us and for DJ to leave. I truly believe that. You know, I don't want to be like this. Yeah, uh, everything the happens for a reason. What's the difference between a breakdown and a breakthrough? Like right. Mr. Jason Isbell says. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that that's the, the, that was a huge part in what was crazy timing is that had we agreed to pay DJ and then COVID happened, we probably would not. I, I don't know if we would be where we are right now. But what happened was DJ got a Phoenix story in this then too. <laughs> yeah. DJ leaving had me shook. Like I'm a, I'm a failure. Right. And then, so he left. You were feeding the, the evil wolf in your brain. For sure. Hard. Uh, and I had other people in my life feeding it too, but I was the number one feeder. Yeah. Um, and I had even thought like, what if I would close the gym and just work for EFM? What if I would do the, all this other stuff running through my mind? But to make this as prompt as possible, COVID happens. We get the PPP handout and I go, this is the greatest thing ever. What can I do with this money and make it worth more money? And that's when I talked to John Meadows. And then it was, now you get a second round of PPP. Then I'm looking at it going, okay, what can I do with this money and make it more? And I started in Meadows is like, go all in on, on YouTube. It's going to make you a better business person. It's going to make you a better coach. You're going to learn all this stuff. And it just was like, boom, yeah. from, you know, and the first, what's crazy is to think about fall of 2020, I had, we had on the channel on YouTube, we had 6,000 subscribers, 7,000 subscribers. So that was three years ago. And now, now it's close to a half million. Yeah. Yeah. 430,000 about. So what's interesting though about all that is I oftentimes get patient or impatient, very impatient. But if I think now I've been and this goes back to the the skill practices is now I'm starting to look at coaching. I've always sort of looked at coaching elite athletes and quads. 
well, why am I not looking at coaching at running the business in a quad? Uh-huh. What can we get done in the quad? Oh yeah. You and know my theory on this one. So I'm going like, <laughs> what can we get what can we get done in the quad? The right. next quad, we're in the current quad. The following quad goes to twenty eight. Then it goes to thirty two. I'm looking at it going, Well, if we look at three quads from now, the thir- the the third round is gonna be uh the Melbourne Olympics in Australia. That's in thirty two. That's how I'm starting to to like plan yeah, as a company. You're getting better at seeing long term yeah your vision you're able to see over the horizon a little bit more take a you don't have to worry so immediate yeah, yeah those yeah. needs are taken care of right yeah and we have the will. systems the processes yeah. all that stuff and none of it's perfect but we're we're looking at it and it, it's definitely workable yeah and it's doing more than just treading water at this point yes for sure <laughs> and it, and now it's like and it all goes back to to, to me it goes back to losing dj um and the ppp if we didn't get the the government money this wouldn't happen yeah and dj almost went on like his own little hero's journey off and away yeah gained all this new knowledge came back yep. and like the on site is way, way tighter. tighter yeah way, way tight. tighter like way tighter let's just say like going out in, into corporate america really helps you like tighten your belt strap a little bit well, with how you operate and like here, here's Get the things current, done. Here's the current discussion is like I truly think that DJ is capable of hiring somebody to take his job. And this is when 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 we come out with some of the really cool custom stuff in the app, I believe DJ could be the number one manager of the custom people and yeah. coaches in the app. And he would manage everything on that side. And I truly think that he could hire someone to take his job. And that to me is like the, the, the sign of a growing healthy company is like, it's a self-managing self-multiplying company where now DJ is capable and this won't happen for a, probably a year. You create your own that come on up through. Yeah. He comes in, he can hire somebody. He moves over here. Then those people train one another based off of how we're trying to grow the company and where we're trying to go with that long-term vision of where are we going to be in three quads? Yeah. You know, and I think that that's where, whereas before I would say, where are we going to be tomorrow? Where are we going to, where are we right, going to be right. today? And I, and I think that. But you have to learn how to see the next day before you can start looking for a week, a month, you uh-huh. know, like sometimes that's, that's where you're at. Like that's where the business is. I think too, it's even like, I, I, I think it's like, to, so a lot of business people will, will ask, or a lot of people starting gyms will ask me these questions. Mm-hmm. And I think that a lot of it also goes back to when I started going to therapy. It's it was like that helped me slow down my mind. And even though we were still failing when that was go, when that stuff was happening, I was able to step out of where I was and see myself in in third the third person, I guess, looking at it like what would Dane like what what should or maybe not even maybe thinking I was like like what if I would ask myself for the advice, what would I do? Just take a step back and just think strategically for a little yeah. bit you ever uh hear like something like with artists and like artworks or like anything creative you're too close to it to like honestly like evaluate it and i don't care who you are like almost every person there's probably someone out there who's good at it They're, you're too close to yourself to like honestly always evaluate yeah like you do have to step back or you have to like get distance from like who you were two years ago or like yeah exactly a month ago to like go okay i see that i want to change that or you know things of that nature absolutely or you, you get a professional to help you make it happen right. you know right 100 percent. i agree with that all right you want to do uh some either or and overrated underrated yeah let's all go. right let's go overrated underrated uh remote coaching <laughs> Dude, you know what's so hard about this is my immediate response is like, okay, my probably one of my biggest successes is remote coaching. Yeah. And I, I truly believe that remote coaching is underrated in the sense that if you're good at it and you have a process laid out and you want to get it done properly, you can do it. And it, and it can it can work really really well. It's just listening to people screaming yeah. outside. Meanwhile, I've had times myself, and I'm pretty freaking good at it. I've had I've coached five Olympians remote. You know, yeah, that's yeah. a pretty good track record. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I've I've coached one dude in the NFL remote, and I think that that to me that that shows that remote coaching can be very good. I have also struggled with remote coaching effectively, and so I think one issue then is like, all right, what we're doing and what we've created now is how can we create the best remote coaching uh, that can be that can be megafied and amplified and that's essentially what we've done with peak strength is take what we did yeah. with alex take what we did with cc take what we did with jason van roy and all these olympians and and you know even tommy hudson who plays for the broncos taking that and then put it into peak strength but there's a lot of people who train remotely that train online with people that just don't give a shit they just want the they just want that income you know speaking of remote too before we continue on with the rest there is a virtual summit coming up too. That's yes. remote too, right? So that's another aspect. Is that I think a lot of people when they're when they're living their life, right? They're they're in a steady, stable job. They're in a position. They're close to their family, and they don't want to move to come to the gym, or they don't want to move to come here. And that's one of the reasons why we're putting on that virtual summit. Is that we're doing a virtual summit for coaches so that you can sign in on a Zoom meeting and get exposed to myself. Ferris Khan and and learn from us for an entire day breaking down progressions breaking down how to improve speed uh, breaking down how to train large group settings and then you can ask us any questions that you want from the comfort of your own home and that is happening October 7th nice and you're doing two by yourself one with him and he's doing one by himself, himself. you're there the whole time both yeah. of you but like who's leading the charge yeah and then there's Q&A too yep sounds like fun yeah it will be fun man so I do like remote coaching if it's effectively executed. Yeah. All right. Overrated, underrated. Technical analysis. Oh, damn. Well, yeah, I'm hitting you in, in your money makers I'm going to say right now. Okay, so here's a – I'm going to share something quick. I, I – you know, this whole week at, at Throws Camp, we – so we have 40-plus kids here all week coaching them. These are all high school kids too, so There's right? a couple college kids, okay. but mainly, mainly high school. Um, and – we do one session where we break down technical analysis. We do a session where we teach them how to watch elite level athletes, elite level throwers, and then we teach them how to break down their own version, their own technique, uh, compared looking through the lens of the elite level athlete. And um, what I ended up doing was, I, you know, with that many kids, you can't get through that many throwers in one session because it ends up being like, it would be like a three hour technical yeah. analysis. And kids would be sleeping. So we do it for about 45 minutes and we have the kids participate and criticize other throwers. And it's a good session of, of improvement and understanding technique. And it, first of all, I want to say these kids blew my doors away at how well they understood throws technique. Like Trevor and I were talking about like, dude, they must watch every single video we put out. Like they, <laughs> they spend so much time studying the craft that we were doing it. And I felt like I was doing it. But one of the things that I wanted to, to brag about, sorry, uh, this is my <laughs> ego, is I said anybody who who didn't get their analysis during this session, raise their hand. So these you know, 11 kids raise their hand. I said, okay, come up to me this afternoon. I'm going to film you. You come up to me. You say, I want, I want you to do a, an analysis, and I'll do an analysis for you. And if you've, got it, if you've got an iPhone, I'll airdrop it to you so you can keep it for the future. And if you have an Android, I'll DM it to you. And dude, I was doing technical analysis, you know, going through it, and I gave it to the one dad, and the one dad's like, "Dude, this he could he could train for the next month off of just this," and that just took you thirty seconds to do. And I was like, "Yeah, now I'm gonna be a salesman. I can do that in thirty seconds." There's one guy online that'll that'll charge you four times what we charge, and it'll take him twelve minutes to get done, and he still won't say anything. I, sh I shouldn't say negative things, but, <laughs> but I think that's the one thing with the technical analysis is that you can take it and you can look at it and go, okay, there's one, two, three things that I, that I break down on the throw or on a lift. Let's just focus on those two things for the next four weeks. Nice. So they're underrated. They're overrated. <laughs> yeah, underrated. Underrated. Yeah. That was a really long. Yeah, that's all, no, it was a good story. It was, dude, it was cool. Yeah, it's good. I, story. And I bet I will put a large sum of money that I have done more technical analysis of weightlifting and throwing than any other, any other human on the planet i figured out that i've done close to ten thousand throwing Whoa. analysis that's part of the reason why you can do it in 30 seconds too yeah oh that's the, the reason i can like you i know what i'm looking Dana, at i came in today you were you just did a whole throws camp for the last 
how many days and you're sitting here watching a video of someone doing throws and it's like <laughs> yeah that's funny it's, just it's like an, it's what you do yeah. yeah you know be like if you were autistic acting autistic like it's just yeah. who you are like it's just me on the dane's, job dane's sitting there looking at a throws video constantly all right either or and then we got the um audience questions what would you rather attend, minor league baseball game or major league baseball oh, game? Dude, oh my, what the heck? A minor league or a major league? Minor league baseball is the like to me one of the most fun sporting events that you can attend. You get to watch pretty good baseball players. Sometimes you'll see a guy that goes to the majors. It's half the cost for food. It's half the cost for booze. It's more. Maybe it's not more socially acceptable, but you can get really drunk and not get yelled at. <laughs> and I'm going minor league baseball. Dude, I love minor league baseball. Yeah, I love I, minor league hockey I, games. The other thing, too, minor leagues, they have cooler, like, names. Way cooler names. Way cooler uh, uniforms. Yeah, like, it's – and, like, you could get something and it, it – And just, you're right on the players. You can talk so much trash oh, yeah. to them. And you – what's funny is you hear minor you league love players talk about, like, what it was like. Like, dude, do you, you – you just got people living in your ears. Yeah. And you get the head turn too. Yeah. Like, like the little, did you just like, say that about yeah. me? It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. And two, like if I have done this just because I was just in the mood to like low key troll, have gone to like local ones, like in the area and have rooted for the away team. Yeah. Yeah. You did that last year when we went just to get the other, like the, you did that at the hockey game yeah, too. The fans like to start saying stuff to me. Yeah. Cause they're so intense. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. You're getting diehards at those, I know. those games. And diehards, which makes it even more fun for me. And that was that just like makes me laugh. Like yeah. I'll, I'm not doing it because I actually care, but I will get a chuckle out of it. Yeah. And some entertainment. All, All right. right. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. That's what I thought you'd say. All right. Reddit. This is uh, Wolfstar321. I noticed that my legs would give out first, especially my quadriceps, if I am programming my training. Should I mainly focus on doing higher reps with lower weights to improve muscle endurance, uh, do barbell squats? Endur I feel like we read that one already. I feel like that person should be doing cluster squats. Oh. Cluster so I think if, you're, if your legs are giving out on you, I do feel like we've answered this, but I would yeah. have them do like – 10 doubles with 30 seconds rest at their best four rep max and do that for the 10 straight minutes. All right. This is affectionate underscore mouse 68 from Reddit. No discord wrapping in here. We're over a thousand now. Aren't we? Oh, that, we have to be, I, I don't know. We were 15 away. I think last time I did notice Caitlin goes in there and peruses around, but I don't think she's ever. Oh, I, I, I comment. But I lurk a lot too. Okay. I check it almost daily. Like yeah. I go through. I saw the Discord notifications on her phone. I was like, what are you in? Some like psycho mom Discord yeah. group? And she's like, no. I go check the Discord for Garage. Rent. Yeah. She has it like for the one thing. I'm starting to join uh, like video game ones too because I nerd out that way. I did want to bring up there was a kid wearing a Berserk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I just talked to a couple kids about video That's games that they play and. Just talking to you has benefited my right ability to relate to kids. Yeah. Kids love video games. So do adults. And then I looked at Lincoln. I was like, don't get any ideas. <laughs> you love board games. Yeah. Do we play Yahtzee like three you, games? You last love night? board games. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah, I agree. I, I want to introduce you to tactical RPGs. I feel like you would love them. Well, that's uh, like Duke Nukem. No, that's a like FPS, a, first person. First, okay. Tactical RPGs are essentially, there's a board. It's gridded out, and you have like a team. And you have to go defeat the other team, like maybe capture like a landmark, destroy all the other team. But you can, there's movement from grid spaces, so people have like movement skills. And then you can attack from there. You can heal your party or something like that. So it's essentially like playing Stratego with more but with interactive things and it's like visually more stimulating okay so it's just i was like i'm like dane would love tactical rpgs i would like it yeah it would take me so long to get good at it though to like no one it. It, you you would like it uh, i'm gonna find one and be like hey get this on the switch because <laughs> yeah, i know you have a switch yeah. and then you could sit and play it and once and you'd it. be like oh wow i do I like, like this it. all right um what are your thoughts on allowing this is from affectionate mouth underscore mouse 68 
on allowing adolescents 13 to 60, 16 years old to perform one rep max efforts at the end of a training cycle, specifically on squats and deadlifts. Would you be concerned about pelvic avulsion fracture injuries? All the studies I've read say that uh, the most common mechanism of injury for pelvic avulsion fracture is from running, uh, jumping, kicking, and falling. I wouldn't be concerned. I wouldn't max out deads. I, I've had too many people hurt. Young young kids will hurt their back. I, I and I've had a lot happen with this, uh, hurting their back. I I have no problem though. Otherwise, I think if they're proficient with their technique and a back squat, I think they're fine as long as they've got like a safety rack or good spotter. Same with a bench press. Nice. Yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, dude, it it's. Don't ask me. I'll, I'll let my eight year old do a one arm if his if he's holding his position. Like, well, I don't and it's care. like, yeah, it's like <laughs> there's something to kids learning what heavy weight feels like. And when yeah. you start feeling shit on your back, and you're like, dude, this is heavy. You like start to engage a little primacy. Like, I gotta sack up. Like, yeah. there's literally something in you that's like, stop being a baby. Now I will go in quick if it. Like, yeah, if looks there's a hesitation for sure. Like from a where like. I don't know, like with you, if you started struggling, like I'd give yeah, it like, a bit. Screw it. Yeah. I'd be like, all right, he's you either going to gonna dump it or go through it. Where a like, younger kid doesn't know how to fail that well yet. Yeah, kid, you're just like, all right. Yeah, you're good. Save him. Or Absolutely. G- but yeah. No, I think that's perfectly fine. Probably. Also, going back to that virtual summit, that was the oh, next yeah. question. Yeah, we're, uh, that's a wrap. Virtual summit, October 7th. You can sign up at garagestrength.com. Myself, Ferris Khan, we're going to have four different presentations and Q and a covering a whole bunch of different stuff to help with athletic development, especially athletic development in team settings until next time. Peace.